Live in downtown Detroit, Local 4 live stream with Jason Carr starts now. So dramatic, John Steckroth, producer of the 915-ish, the Jason Carr Experiment, live from the Local 4 newsroom in three-piece stereo. Felt like wearing the banker's suit today. Are you having audio issues, John? No, I think it's just my, uh, just my headphone. End? Hopefully you can hear us out there in Facebook Live Land or live streaming on clickondetroit.com. Are we good to go? We're good. We're good to go. All right. We're good. Uh, Dateline September 26, 2016 at 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this from uh, Salon.com. The headline, the bar has never been lower. How the media already gave Donald Trump victory in the debate with not so great expectations. It says here, um, eight years ago, Sarah Palin debated Joe Biden in the sole vice presidential debate of that campaign season. Among a variety of responses that were barely linked to questions she was asked, Palin described the role of vi vice president as such. Quote, well, our founding fathers were very wise there in allowing through the Constitution much flexibility there in the office of the vice president. And we will do what is best for the American people in tapping into that position and ushering in an agenda that is supportive and cooperative with the president's agenda in that position. Yeah, so I do agree with him that we have a lot of flexibility in there. End quote. A team of forensic scientists are still today attempting to decipher what exactly she was thinking about. And the reason why this was referenced in this Salon.com article, um, the writer goes on to say, it's safe to assume the political press will scramble to give Donald Trump the benefit of the doubt following tonight's debate at Hofstra University. As long as he doesn't blurt a showstopper, something so horrendous that it's absolutely unavoidable to say he was destroyed by it, he'll successfully defy his rock bottom expectations and therefore he'll be seen as having tied or in some cases, having topped Hillary. Well, I'll we'll be looking forward to tomorrow's debate. So essentially, if he doesn't make a, a major gaffe, um, if you want to read that, by the way, it's on salon.com. But as long as he doesn't blurt a um, crooked Hillary or Lion Ted or something like that, he will uh, automatically, according to this pundit, be seen as having won the debate. What do you think? We're curious to hear from you on the comments down there below or on the live stream uh, on clickondetroit.com. John, on to the next topic. Well, tomorrow, we I just want to bring this up. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to be having a debate discussion at Campus Marshalls Park live at 8 a.m., so uh, tune in to that. I think we'll be live streaming on Click On. And, uh, and so there's that. Let's move on, though. We've got a house nice that is just amazing. By it's... the way, what do you think of the three-piece suit? Oh, I love it. You love it? Yeah, I love it. You I, like the banker's attire? I, yeah. I, just, I felt kind of, yeah. I feel like I should have a pocket watch and maybe you a should, mustache. You should have a pocket watch. <laughs> I don't own any three pieces, but I'd like to get one one day. Yeah. That's, all right. Uh, well, three piece suits were, uh, they were, were all the well rage back house. in the day. Take a look at this house right here. Yeah. You have the slideshow. Can you pull it up full? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, this is a house that was is stuck in the 70s. I love, these are called time capsules by people who conduct estate sales. And... If you know me, you know that I'm, I'm an old soul. I was probably born too late. Um, I probably was like Don Draper in a prior life, uh, Mad Men. Um, this sort of thing that has basically been untouched, that looks like our family room back in 1978. Uh, I would buy this house. I in would a live in this house unchanged. I really would. I think it's great. It There's could be a, yours if you want to move to Fring, Framingham, Framingham, Massachusetts. They probably say frame, Framingham, or Frang, Frangham. Now this uh, bathroom on the right is a bit much. It's the only room in the house I don't think I could be in. Uh, are you kidding? That that's, that's like the defining. That's like harsh. the Scarface. <laughs> that's great. So what uh, do you think of this house? Would you live there in absolutely. all of its Brady B Bunch glory? Absolutely. It's, it's incredible. I, I would not change a thing. I would buy it for, I believe the house is $624,900. You could probably get it for less than that. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, That's the best. The, the, I'd pay six hundred twenty-five for it. So <laughs> <laughs> There was a condo in Chicago that was just like this. It was yeah. either last year or the year before. But it was the same kind of thing. It was a, a completely time capsule condo uh, that you, know, you could have had for, I, I can't remember the price, but it was pretty reasonable. It was not expensive. Uh, the giant inflatable duck. Oh, yeah. Where's my phone? I gotta. 
Hold on, I got some music for this. Hang on. Do you have this full screen? You know, I do, but with the audio issue I had, I'm not quite certain, but let's give it a shot anyways. Do you know this song? It's called Disco Duck by Rick Dees. It's a Disco Duck song. So uh, this duck um, basically escaped a car dealership in Scotland and just went for a ride down the interstate. There you see it. There's, there's video. We can't show you the video, but you could look it up, I'm sure, if you were so inclined. Uh, there was video of this duck making its getaway from the car dealership where it resides as a mascot. And it just got blown down the highway. Kind of got blown away like Jason Colthorpe's fantasy team at the hands of my... Oh, here we go. You know, uh, says the guy whose record was so terrible, so terrible going in, 0-2, he was 0-2, that I had the gall, the nerve. He, he texted me something about something. I said, $50, I beat you in fantasy this week. He goes, I don't think so. And that was before, and of course, afterwards, I think we somehow made a bet of $20, which I, I do owe you. No such thing. There's no wagering. We, we yeah, have, there's we no have, wagering. We have made no wager. We've done nothing illegal. We Actually, the bet was, loser has to annoy Hank Winchester every day this week by tripping, pulling hair, something like that. I don't know. This is a true story. Let me see this. Hank, I lost, by the way. Come here, I need to annoy you. This is a true story. Hank Winchester was wearing a Lions... Tiger game yesterday. I looked right at him and said, hi, Hank, and he just See, blew you me off. You did? I, didn't see. I, I looked like right at you and said, hey, yeah. hi, hey, Hank, what's up? I saw, I, know that is, I did not okay. recognize that. I uh, saw, breaking um, news, I'll see you guys. Instagram, uh, Taryn had a cute little picture of you guys. Gia and I walked right past you, and no. you looked right at me. You had a Lions jersey on. I did. You were standing with people. <laughs> yes. And I said, hey, Hank, and he, he was... No, you know I love you. He gave me the one. I was uh, a little focused on that Green Bay game. Though. Yeah, well, the Lions, Lions were down 31-10, and they couldn't make the comeback. I know. All right, so Cole Thorpe is running out the door on breaking news. Chuck, what's the breaking news? No, nope, don't know yet. All right. Uh, random act of kindness at a gas station in Australia. We have to talk about this. Yes. Um, this is actually very cool because it has a Saginaw component. Um, a man from Saginaw who had moved to Australia named John Kennedy. He was behind a guy uh, at a gas station. And the guy didn't have enough money to pay his, his petrol tab, as they say. Petrol. And it, it worked out to $83 American. And this Saginaw native named John Kennedy paid for it. That's John there on the right. He paid for his gas, his petrol, and um, just said, you know, Pay it forward, pass it on. I uh, didn't really want any credit, but they have since found each other on social media, so this is sort of blowing up. It's going viral. The story of, you know, random act of kindness between two strangers. Things are expensive in Australia. The American dollar comes over there and uh, doesn't have the buying power. So. That's true. I mean, can you imagine? The guy was stuck. He didn't have a means of payment. It was like he couldn't remember the PIN for his debit card. His credit card, there was something wrong with that. He didn't have any cash on him, and he'd already pumped the gas. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, late for work and some other stuff. So, um, well, What's scary in Australia, there's, there's some freeways where if you don't stop at that gas station and fill up, you won't make it to the next one, and then you'll be stranded in the middle of, of a desert. Then you'll end up like Mad Max beyond Thunderdome. Exactly. You're out there it's all about being the chased by goofy guys on motorcycles with spikes the water. coming out of their face and all kinds of stuff so um, that's awesome a native Michigander a Saginaw man making international headlines for picking up a rather expensive gas station tab for a complete stranger so good for John way to represent uh, kind of on that same note Facebook commenting are you the the person that that when your friends or family they they post a picture of their dog or their kid or their new car or something like that you just kind of go eh, I'll like you know, and then on the like, like, well, apparently they've done a study. There's always a study. And they've discovered that if you just take a moment to, you know, one or two sentences, a comment, let's say that your, um, your buddy um, just got a text. Your buddy has a new car. Like in the case of John Steckroth, ace digital producer here on the Jason Car Experiment, picked up a, well, not picked up, you, what, uh, family passed it along to you. Yes. A Lincoln. John's very proud of this Lincoln LS, a 2006? Yep, 2006. Waxed it uh, just over the weekend. Very sharp ride. He brought it today. 
Maybe we should go out and take a picture of you with the car. We probably should. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like, if he put that on Instagram, and I follow you on Instagram, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if I saw a picture of you pop up with the car, I could just like it, or I could actually comment and say, sharp set of wheels, Stackroth. Now, how would you take that differently, just a like, or if I actually took the time to make a comment? The comment means more. The comment means Absolutely. more, right? Absolutely. The cool. like is just mindless. That's just hitting, hitting a button. But to, to comment, to have something real to say, that's, that's what it's, it's all about. A new study done by Carnegie Mellon University found that people who received personalized comments from close friends reported improvements in their moods, life satisfaction, and stress levels. Uh, in fact, researchers found that when participants received 50, or I'm sorry, 60 comments in a month, they experienced a short-term happiness boost on par with how people feel after they have a baby. It's amazing. Yeah. Researchers say liking a post can bring momentary happiness, but a simple personal comment can drastically improve a person's day. Okay, now I got a question. Where'd you get the local four pin? Did they pass those out and I wasn't here? That's amazing. <laughs> okay, you win the uh, the out of left field unexpected comment award for today. Yes, Everett asked me about this on the set this morning too. I know people. I have. I got a guy. I I, I do not have. I the can right see you're contacts. all jealous. You, you all want the local four, the local four magnet. Um, pumpkin spice fries in Japan. Yes, oh, this boy. is a thing. Uh, there they are. That's a real thing. McDonald's in Japan starting to sell pumpkin spice fries, uh, pumpkin spice and chocolate sauce, officially called the Halloween choco potato fries. Japan. <laughs> choco potato fries. This is fun to say. They'll go on sale starting on Wednesday, and if they're successful there, they may come here next year. Well, we're all looking forward to that <laughs> so, so much. <laughs> That's amazing because they never, whenever we do these stories about some exotic food stuff that they come up with in test market overseas in Japan or another country. It's usually country, out of Australia. Uh, g'day, mate. Hmm? They never seem to make it stateside, ever. No. We're very picky. Uh, Curtis Granderson is close to making history. With just over a week left in the season, he is currently, uh, he has 30 home runs, which you would, if you somebody told you that a player has 30 home runs, the first thing you, that you would think in that stat line is they have at least 100 RBI, maybe at least 85, at the very least 85. He is on an almost mind-boggling pace to drive in just 64 runs. He only has 56 right now. That's amazing. 30 home runs and only 56 RBI? It doesn't even seem possible, but um, 24 solo home runs. So he's got uh, six game, uh, games to knock in eight runs, any less, and he will officially break the record. That's kind of amazing, I think. Um, so we'll be on Grandy Watch. Chuck, do you believe that? Curtis Granderson, 30 dingers and only 56 RBI. And I refuse to say RBIs because it's runs batted in. Do you want somebody that hits for home runs? Do you want somebody that hits for home runs? Or batting average. Or batting average. batting average all day. You'd rather have Ichiro Suzuki than Curtis Granderson. I would rather have singles and doubles all day. Singles and doubles all day instead of... that example right there. 30 home runs and 50 RBIs. There you have it. Or you get somebody that's got to get 300 You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Tigers, uh, I was at the game yesterday. It was not pretty. We, had, we were still standing in the souvenir stand line. Uh, my daughter wanted one of the giant foam claws that you can actually see uh, on my Instagram, at Jason Carr TV. You can see her with this, this giant claw. Uh, it took forever. We were behind the people that have to try on that hat and then that hat, and then that hat, and then the people behind them had to try on this, that, oh, I don't want that one, I want. We're standing there, and the entire time I'm looking down the stairwell toward the field, and I'm just watching. The rest of the game go by. It's like four nothing before we even got to our seat. It was, it was really disturbing, and then the Tigers come back, and then they give up more runs, and then back and forth, da da da. A disappointing weekend, really, Saturday and Sunday. Um, oh. <laughs> Chuck with the rather eloquent description of they pooped the bed. Well, and as a matter of fact, they did. 
Uh, now they have to win against the... They have not been able to beat the Indians, but what, twice, I think? All, all season or all the times they've, they've faced them. So now uh, this is their toughest test. They're a game and a half out of the wild card, second wild card spot. They have to take on the Indians beat them and they have to beat the Braves and hopefully that will get them into the postseason they could put some kind of a run together but talk about a depressing weekend out of the Tigers not just the Tigers but the Lions and Spartans tough weekend tough weekend let's talk about a winning team in Michigan here. oh, 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 oh let's now let's oh here we go the here we go percentage in the United States of college football Wolverine the Wolverine slappy over here it's all right Notre Dame laid an egg too so there's that. Uh, Lions fans look, <laughs> licking their wounds. Spartan fans hanging their heads in shame. Tigers fans just shaking their heads. Um, but Michigan has the number one winning percentage. Michigan, hats off to Michigan. The Wolverines uh, kept it from being a completely disastrous weekend for all of our sports fans across the D. Uh, live in the D, top of the hour, we will see you, uh, myself, Chuck, and Tati. Um, yeah. We'll have a infotainment pack show for you uh, coming up. The Disco Duck song. Stay classy, Detroit.